You keep hearing about it. What is QSTAR? Well, I've got Dr. Tao, CEO and co-founder of MindOS here to tell us all about it. Dr. Tao, why is surpassing human intelligence such a huge potential breakthrough for AI? Thanks, Rana, for asking. That's a very interesting question. Um, I think, first of all, as an AI researcher, I think the whole point of the AI field is to achieve human-level intelligence for AI. And we have been working on that for more than 70 years. And uh, But uh, for society, I think this question has two folds. Uh, one is from the benefit side, because AI is very different from all the technologies we have developed before. Everything we developed in the past hundreds of years are still tools for humans to use, right? They are very powerful, but we still need people to operate these tools to, ab to be able for them to, 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 to be powerful. But AI is different. AI is not solving a particular question, but AI is trying to replace the intelligence of human. So if AI is surpassing human intelligence, then we don't need these people to operate these tools anymore. And uh, everything can be delegated to AI. And uh, for an uh, individual like me or you, we would be able to use unlimited, almost free intelligence resource in the future. So if that's true, then everyone can be the CEO of his own company. Everyone can be, can be able to have his own cabinet consisting of AI and everybody's life is elevated and amplified by such a large margin. And that's the benefit side. But also people are also worried about the safety side for AI to be that powerful. Because when we have an AI that's smarter than human consistently, naturally we don't have a very good way to contain the AI or align the AI by our human intelligence. So it happens in and some field before. So we all know that there is a model called AlphaGo, which is much better than the best human Go player in the world. And uh, when this model comes out, you would find that uh, the, the Go players would tend to trust AI no matter what, because everything AI do is gonna be more superior than human. And uh, the only way to work with AI is to trust the AI's decision on playing Go. But if that can be generalized to every task in the life, and uh, we, if we have a general AI that's smarter than human, then all the people would tend to trust the AI's decision no matter what. So that can be very dangerous as well, because now we are uh, losing the motivation to control the AI because we think they are smarter, we should just delegate to them. And that's one thing. Another thing is if AI has passed human intelligence, meaning that AI has entering a loop of self-improvement, because any improvement for the future would not be done by human. It will only be done by AI itself. So it will upgrade based on uh, its own like uh, versioning system by improve version by version and uh, having a larger and larger gap to uh, human intelligence and that feels like out of control to me so if that happens we probably want to find a more principled way that we can contain the ai and without the ai being too far and too too far away from human being so the theory is that q star is a combination of q learning and a star for those of us who don't know, what is Q learning? Yeah, that 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 is a very technical question, but I think it's also very important for for the implication of AI. I, I think it comes back to how people think, how people's cognitive system work. Uh, there is a theory in uh, cognitive science that people has two ways of thinking. One we call it fast thinking or intuitive thinking. Another way is more like slow thinking, which are more like reasoning based thinking. So if you look at that uh, from that perspective and you take a look at the current large language models, you will find most of their way to think is intuitive thinking, fast thinking. So they can give you very good answers, but they cannot do 
complicated reasoning, especially when they are in a very、um, complex environment and trying to make a decision iteratively. So th- I think that's why Q learning is very important here. And Q learning is a technology developed developed by AI community in the past actually thirty years, trying to solve how can an AI system find a way to reason step by step. And if we can combine that with the current large language models, we would be able to produce AI that can truly reason and would be able to match people's Reasoning ability even surpass humans' reasoning ability. That's why it's so important. So, let's give an example how a typical Q learning works. So,、uh, the very first step of Q learning is to coming up with a way to search solutions. So, for example, when we human are in a scenario trying to figure out what's the next step to do. Uh, we actually have different ways, different options to think about. And in Q learning of large language model, there would be a technology called tree of thoughts. So basically, the AI would be able to map out a tree of different kinds of options, and AI would jump in to start to learn what's the best way to go through. And then that's the next step, because every Thinking pattern. Every path we go would have a reward, right? And the AI model here, the Q learning here, is trying to learn a function called Q function, and this Q function is basically trying to evaluate the reward of every step. So let's say we, if we go option one, the reward is much better of solving that problem, and option two is much less. Then the model that Q learning is learn has has learned would be able to emphasize the value of option one in such scenario. So that's basically the se- the second step, and the third step we call it like the process reward model. So this model is not only rewarded by the end result, saying if the the the, the task is finished or not. Actually, it tries to distribute credit through the process. So, because all these complicated tasks would would require multiple steps to to get to the solution, and sometimes the steps in the middle don't get reward. So, meaning the AI don't know uh the the potential outcome of the of the reasoning in the middle of the reasoning process. Then the in the Q learning there is a Technology developed to distribute credits in the middle of different steps, so AI would be able to know that even this minor step I take would have a very good signal that it's good or bad. And through that, we are basically、uh, teaching AI and、uh, ask AI to learn how to reason step by step. It's not, but previously, if you take a look at how large language models are trained, you would find that they are mostly trained by imitating humans' behavior. So they take the big chunk of the internet data and trying to learn how people speak, how people write. It's more like、uh, imitating people's behavior. But Q learning is more like self-play, that you play with yourself, you do some sort of like a、uh, uh, thought experiment. And trying to give self, give yourself feedback, so you truly learn how to reason. I think that's why Q learning is so important in this AGI、uh, technology, and、uh, that's why people think this is a breakthrough for the AI. And what is A star? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I I think this is another term, technical term we need to ex- explain here. And A star is actually developed. By a computer scientist, well, I think it's more like more than 50 years ago. So it's a very very old、uh, algorithm, and、uh, A star is basically a search algorithm. So what we do A star previously is that when we play a game, play the game of chess or go, when the AI wants to think of next step, there are too many options. So we need to find a heuristic way. To narrow down the options, and make sure the the options left are good enough 
for like further learning or further uh, studying. And uh, that's how A star work. A star is basically a heuristic search algorithm, and we give some principles to the AI. And when they do first, like uh, we mentioned, a tree of thought search, they would be able to uh, get to the good enough options, right? It is especially important in large language models because it's not like playing chess. We only have limited options in large language models. We can get so many unlimited options for next step because it's basically a token generation process. So we have unlimited combinations of tokens in the world, and we want to have a way that this when these tokens are generated, they are more principled and they are more uh, heuristic. That the reasoning steps generated from the AI would lead to the best options as much as much likely as possible. So that's how A star is gonna help in the uh, Q learning process. So if Q star is a combination of Q learning and A star, what is the implication of Q star on AI? Uh, I think if the Q star um, paradigm really work, I think it will give AI a really, really powerful boost uh, to its uh, capability. So I think the first one Q star would be able to address is the data issue, because when we try to train these large language models, we always need a lot of like high quality online data to feed into the model. But we now have reached to a stage where we don't have enough data. We have all we have basically used all of the data humanity has generated in the past thousands of years. So uh, if there's no more data feed into the model, there's no way this model can can be improved anymore. And that's why when we do Q study, you would find the data of reasoning is actually generated by AI itself. So we don't need to feed data generated by human anymore. The AI would be able to generate their own data and improve themselves. That's a huge step in the AI development, and which means we have unlimited data in the future for AI to improve themselves. That's one thing. And the second thing is, as you can see, the AI is not only imit imitating humans' behavior, they are actually self-play, which means when they pass to the threshold of human intelligence, they can go all the way further to be better and better and truly be like super artificial super intelligence, which means like much, much better than human being in the future. So that's basically unlimited potential can be unleashed by this AI uh, model. And third thing I think is very important for, uh, for us to, to revisit is when large language models are trained in the beginning, we always feel that the model is too big because the model is doing a lot of things of memorizing like uh, knowledge or common sense or all this kind of like uh, information into the model. But uh, the only, the, the reasoning part of the model is potentially less than 10% of the parameters used in the model. So that's a big issue because we have this big model, but only a small part of the model is using for reasoning and thinking. But 90% of the model is using to memorizing all the uh, non-important information. So, so the third, the third part of the model, uh, the third part of the implication is something very interesting that when large language comes out first, we always feel that like 95% of the model is not used for reasoning and thinking. Only 5% of them is used for that, but 95% of them is, is used to memorizing all the detailed informations on the web. But uh, what we really want is a model that can be at least like 30% or 50% of the model is used for reasoning. So I think QSTAR and self-play would be able to uh, achieve that. By self-playing, they are not increase the model size, but they are using the same size of the model, but increase the amount of the model, the portion of the model can, that can be used for reasoning, because they are increasing the power of reasoning. And by sacrificing some of the 
memories the AI learned from the web. I think in that way we can achieve to a stage where we can use a very small model, say like seven billion parameters, which can be fit into a mobile phone, and this model can be as powerful as GPT-4, which is like uh, uh, one trillion parameters. So if that can be achieved, I think AI is gonna be truly democratized to every device, to every person in a very low cost. And that's a very interesting future we are getting into. Um, but uh, to be honest, I think the current stage of the QSTAR is not gonna bring us to AGI directly because we do have a, a very good breakthrough for QSTAR to solve math problems, which requires a lot of reasoning. Um, but uh, for the general world, like the, the problems we want to solve in the world, we don't have, it's not like math problems, we always have a very clear answer to it. So uh, we, we don't have a way to get a very good feedback from this world. And that's why we need, like uh, we in AI, we call it a world model, that a model can truly understand how the whole world is going to respond to AI's behavior. And if we can truly build a world model, then this model would be able to teach the AI how to reason. And with these two together, we're probably gonna see an AI that's gonna surpass human being and can do all the things that human has been doing and, and in every way. So I think there's still more work to be done there. Dr. Tao, we are speculating wildly here about what QSTAR actually is. How likely is it that it is a combination of Q learning and A star? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. I think uh, it's very interesting to see all these AI researchers are doing like speculation instead of truly figuring <laughs> out the technology, right? Uh, I, I think it's uh, it's probably the most speculated AI model in the history. And, uh, uh, but, but for me, I think it's very likely to be true. Uh, it's not by, by guessing. I think it's, you, you can actually have some evidence from uh, OpenAI and DeepMind. So in OpenAI, if you take a look at up there like uh, uh, applications, oh, sorry. So in, in OpenAI, if you take a look at their, their like past work, you would find in uh, May uh, 2000, 20, 2023, they have published a few work. Uh, one is called Let's Verify Step by Step. Another one is called uh, process supervision. So they have been working on reinforcement learning with Q learning and trying to do this process reward model uh, for a long time. And uh, I think that's the major direction they are going to going through to, to improve the model. And another signal comes from Google and DeepMind. Uh, when Google wants to develop this model called Gemini, uh, the head of DeepMind actually uh, mentioned that Gemini is going to be trained like a system of AlphaGo. So which means they are also going to use Q learning and reinforcement, le reinforcement learning to improve large language models, especially improve its reasoning capa uh, uh, capability. So I think all these top tier research labs are using Q learning to improve the large language model and bring bring the large language models to the next tier, to the next level. And uh, that's why I think it's highly likely to be true. Dr. Tao, you are the CEO and co-founder of MindOS. So I'm actually curious, how will MindOS prepare for the future, knowing everything that we discussed today? Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Um, first of all, I think any progress uh, made by large language models is gonna be a very challenging uh, thing for startups to adapt. And uh, given that, I think overall the future for uh, AI startups like MindOS is actually better right now because uh, those AI, AI startups like us would heavily rely on large language models. So if the model can be smarter in terms of reasoning and other uh, abilities, uh, we as like products built on these models would be able to do more things for our users and to be able to, to achieve more for the user. And that's a great thing for us. 
and uh, especially for mind OS, because what we try to do is build everybody's personal AI and uh, trying to build an ecosystem that all the services can be uh, refrained as a AI agent and all these AI agents would be able to talk to each other and uh, collectively help every user to uh, address their, their problems in their life. And uh, to that extent, I think this model improvement is going to help us because in our mind, we think uh, besides the model's uh, ability, we still need two things for people to truly use the model very well. One is we, we need a true user understanding of the model that especially for your personal AI, we want this AI to truly understand you, truly know who you are and truly behave in a way that you prefer it to be. And that's what we are doing mostly and um, trying to build a really good user understanding module uh, for the user. And uh, the second thing is trust, right? Even the model is super powerful. We don't naturally trust the model. Uh, what we really want is to uh, have a real organization or real person, real expert behind each AI and uh, using this expert's expertise, uh, expert's uh, knowledge to teach the AI so people can trust AI because it's backed by a real person or real organization. So that's the second part of MindOS, that we're trying to build an agent platform that people can truly build their own AI, uh, which can be trusted by their users. So the user understanding part and the trust part cannot be solved by uh, the improving of reasoning ability. So that's the two things we are going to keep focusing on. And uh, with the help of these AI models, I think uh, MindOS is going to be better and better for every user to use.